jungle. What jungle? The one in Calais? Oh, that! We tell them what it is. It's a slum. Occupied land. It's a camp. Who gave the permission? It's a makeshift camp. It's a makeshift refugee camp. That's better. It's self-sustaining and permanent. It's going away. It's not going away. Well, then it's temporary. Uh, until we... We are working on a solution. A solution is imminent. But they've built schools, churches, mosques, even cafes and food shops. It's getting bigger. We say that their life in the camp is desperate and uncomfortable. They're learning yes. French. They're learning French and speaking it well. We say that they all want to come here. They won't want to stay. They're refugees. Asylum seekers. They are immigrants looking for an easy life. But they've escaped war and persecution from Iraq, Libya, Sudan, Afghanistan, Pakistan. What's happened in Pakistan? Taliban. Oh, yes. Uh, forgot about them. And of course, there's Eritrea and of course, Syria. Look, we say it's hard to say where they are from. They have no passports, no papers. They listen and read the news. What can we believe of what they tell us? But we know. We know they are still coming. But dying along the way, at sea, in the sea, on the boats, they on take, the beaches. They take stupid risks to get in. It's their own fault. So resilient, a lot of them. They're very determined. Their spirits are breaking. The EU is breaking up over what to do, blaming each other. <laughs> we mustn't blame ourselves for being so appealing. Are European countries doing enough? Turkey has 1.6 million asylum seekers, Germany 97,000, France 68,000, Sweden 40,000, Italy 35. Thousand. But can we do more? We have our fair share of immigrants! If we let them in, then eventually they contribute to the economy. We don't! But we must admit that they are a drain on our economy. They usually make up a reliable workforce. They usually become a social problem. They don't have it easy. They become a drain on our social resources. Some of them appeal for asylum for months. Years with no success. We often have to make arrests and detain them. In detention centres, they become stuck in a bureaucratic limbo indefinitely. We must find the most, the most suitable way to process them. We're proposing biometric fingerprinting to keep a track of them individually. We're collating their number. They're looking for alternative immigrant routes to gain entry and go underground, exceeding our calculations. We are succeeding to deter them away. They are finding other routes, other countries. They now walk for miles. Malnutritioned, dehydrated, sick and injured just across borders. We're slowly resolving the issue and they are reviewing their options. They are being attacked and beaten by locals, vigilantes, police, soldiers, politicians. Some bogus claims are being deported. Our strategy is working. Smugglers are the winners. Each one found in a lorry costs the driver or their company £4,000 each. It's become lucrative for smugglers. Lorries parked on the motorway mean we have tighter borders and we can monitor the situation better. Smugglers are even getting those that can pay passports. We are finding it hard to identify the smugglers. The refugees seem to know a network of underground smugglers. The smugglers are invisible operators. Their human plight and desperation is being exploited. The immigrants keep exploiting themselves. The smugglers are continuously extorting money out of people. If they are so desperate, where are they finding the money to give to smugglers? They speculate to accumulate. They land and work zero hours and save up the money to continue their journeys. Some do this for years before they can get here. <clears throat> We are dealing with a clever, manipulative network of strangers. We must not suppress our humanity. Our humanity is all we have left. But we prefer what we think we know. We know it will be difficult for everyone. Europe is now saying they must be Christian.
our mercy is informed by our Christian faith. That if they are Muslim, they must go somewhere else. Europe is full of Muslims. Slovakia says it doesn't want any. Slovakia. Poland doesn't want any. Poland. Belgium doesn't want any. Belgium. Hungary doesn't want any. Hungary. The Swedish Democrats say they're not interested in them. Sweden? Ireland says it as well. Trust the Irish. England says it's not interested. Not in so many words. Latvia and Lithuania want to ban the burqa. What's the idea? Oh, who, would think, who would think that resolves anything? France? Yes. C'est la vie. Where are the Germans in all of this? They have to be worse than us. They have banners written by people saying, refugees welcome. Bring your families. Sound right. <laughs> certainly left us looking a little. But let's just say they're leading by example. See, but I heard about fires and refugees throwing rocks. Well, that's a bit like the burning of churches in America. It's only prominent news if it serves an agenda. And what agenda would that be? Well, some news outlets are interested in a race war. So they don't report the burning of black churches, but the confrontation of Confederate flag supporters. So where does Angela Merkel fit into all of that? Well, I think Angela Merkel isn't interested in copycat incidents. She's more into venting, visiting burnt asylum shelters, and even sent in the army to build refugee camps in parks. Oh, she hasn't. That's Germany's <laughs> way of letting the refugees know they matter. No matter! We'll deal with this. You know the party line, no tolerance. But yes, assimilation will do that to you. Sorry, bad joke. I'm glad you realise that. Listen, the instruction has been passed on. If anyone asks about the future, we pull the plug. No response. We pull the plug. We sink the whole thing for conference. How? Power cut. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here, sorry to have kept you. We understand you all have busy lives, so your time is precious to us. It's, uh, so we have no intention of keeping this crisis meeting, I mean it's not a crisis meeting, it's, uh, it's a community engagement meeting. We will do our best to keep it short. They have their own lives. Donations! No, uh, questions. <laughs> questions? Uh, of course, that's what we're here for. I gather most of you have your numbered envelopes with your important questions inside. <laughs> uh, yes, so, uh, we will have the answers. If you have an envelope with a number on it, put the envelope in the air. <laughs> oh yes. Ah, you. Yeah, please well, hold them up. Thank you. Great. Uh, please, now, <coughs> stand up and make your way to Stevie. Steve, our uh, usher on the
That's why we are here to answer the question. So let us. <laughs> <laughs> the people on boats and those walking miles are in crisis, and that has put us in crisis. So think of their. So for us to deal with that, for it to be dealt with appropriately, then then we have to listen to their crisis. So think of their flood to us as uh, as here in Europe as a flash flood, and once we know the source, we will we will put our dam in place. By dam, you mean tighter border control, disseminate said phobic ideas, blaming the police for searching for common traffic noise, not bombs and gunfire. But we have to be decent in our response, and each person's case is different, but they've all been through a lot, and that we have to be sensitive towards and respond to appropriately. Question two. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Um, my name is uh, Herman Gretsch, and my Twitter handle is Earthly70. And uh, I wanted to say, well, I want to ask migrants are dead at sea in lorries trying to cross borders. Rather than arguing about semantics, shouldn't we, don't we need like a long term strategy to steam debt? Yes! <laughs> yes! Most, if not all, EU countries are looking at strategic methods to improve the situation and limit the number of fatal casualties. In the EU Parliament recently, they rolled out a document, a scroll, in fact, a symbolic gesture. It was 100 metres long with 17,500 names on the list. It was the names of all the dead people trying to reach Europe for asylum. At least we know their names. <laughs> Name one. Name one. Just one. Amy? 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 We are aware of the severity of the <laughs> And it's unfortunate some people have lost their lives before more proactive methods of engagement were uh, put into place. Next question. <laughs> How many more can we take? Number of migrants entering breaks records. The government won't pay for it. We will be forced to pay for it. Yes. Let me be frank with you. We are not taking any before the angry one jumps in. <laughs> we, have to have, we have to have the resources and capabilities to offer decent assistance or support. And with our current state of flux, we are still working things out with a lot of countries. Everyone has to have their say to agree on a workable solution. Actions speak louder than words. Then why don't you shut up and assimilate like the rest of them? I think that's all we've got time for. No! I will speak. Let me say. Let me tell you I am an immigrant. I am the child of immigrants. Refugees, in fact. And it was tough. The toughest thing is being seen, being visible, being recognised as human and accepted. It took a long time. You have to work for those things. You have to work for your right to be seen as everyone else. And that usually happens once people know that you are not sponging. You work hard, you pay taxes. You've got yourself a job, you keep your head down. You're in a constant state of chase and panic. Just like everyone else. You're just trying to improve your status, your class, your education, your living conditions, your quality of life, just like everyone else. And soon, people start warming to you. And you forget about where you started, how you happen to be here. All that matters is, is where you are now and what you and those you now call friends worry about. That's all that matters. And if they don't care about fucking refugees because of how much it's going to cost, how much it's going to be a cost to me, to us, then you don't care about fucking refugees. Because we all agree it will make things difficult for all of us. It will take away some things we take for granted, like, 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 uh, stuff, stuff that matters to us. Uh, that's all that matters, and I make my mind based on that. That's how it works. It's not fucking complicated. It's no fucking secret or conspiracy. It's, I just want to look after what's mine. 
what I know and who I trust. That's what matters. For all I care, you can stay in Palais, the jungle, forever. They can climb fences, drop frozen from the sky, die on beaches in the water, on boats beaten to death at the hands of the police. It's their own fucking fault. What the fuck are they doing here? What's happening to them is not my fault. What the fuck are they doing here? They don't matter because they don't mean a thing to me. Because I am here and I like my life and I want to protect it for me. That's what matters. And, and, uh, and, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs>